Hi, my name is Wilnan Ziada, and I'm a New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am so excited to be speaking with Phoenix's latest celebrity artist, Travis Kent. He's an acclaimed writer, actor, and painter. For more on Travis, you can read more about him right below this video, but in the meantime, here is a sneak peek at the amazing talent of Travis. Down to the night cafe. Officer, just take me down, down, down. Well, hello, Travis. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Will? I'm good, thank you. Well, the audience just got a little sneak peek of your amazing talent. And you kind of do it all, my friend. You start on Broadway in Disaster. You are uh, an amazing writer, obviously an amazing actor. And you also paint some works. We will be getting a little sneak peek of in a bit. But I want to know, growing up in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, when did you realize that you had a love of art, period. Uh, you know, it uh, it kind of runs in my family. It skips every other generation. <laughs> my, um, let's see, my great, I think it was my great or my great great grandmother on one uh, of my mother's parents' side of the family uh, was a studio painter and did a lot of landscapes that uh, still circulate in our family. And then my grandmother, my mother's mother, uh, was also a professional artist. Uh, she did a lot of mural paintings. Um, and she is also a hooker now, which she, she's always very proud to say. She hooks rugs. That's her new um, art form of choice. Yep, yep, she gets you with that one. Uh, so it's always been around to some degree in my family, uh, especially with my grandmother, who I was very lucky to grow up not far from. Anytime I went to her house, there was always some uh, little piece of inspiration there. Uh, but I was also lucky to um, to have a family that that supported my my artistic uh, tendencies because I am the only Irish dancer in my family. Um, which kind of came out of left field. Uh, well, I want to also... go into that. You yeah. are, you are, you are, you are kind of an expert Irish step. I mean, how did that even come about when you were a kid? But you still continue to brush up on it here and there, right? Yeah. Well, funnily enough, it started in my grandma's house. She really is my muse in my childhood. Uh, she or I was in her house in her basement. Uh, the TV was on PBS. And an infomercial for Riverdance came on the TV. Of course. Yep, it was like 1996, uh, right after Riverdance had just come out. And I was transfixed, just like amazed by what I was seeing on the screen. And after failed attempts at every Little League sport imaginable, um, when I saw something that I wanted to do, like actively wanted to do, and I told my parents that I wanted to do it, um, I was fortunate that they, uh, they figured it out. They found an Irish dance school and the rest was history. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, but I, I danced competitively for seven years. I was a uh, champion at the regional level and uh, qualified for the world championships when I was like nine or 10 years old. As you do as a nine or 10 year old. Yep. <laughs> While the other kids were, you know, playing t-ball, you were uh, Mr. Riverdance Jr., you know, winning world titles. Well, not quite, but uh, definitely crushing it in the studio, yeah. <laughs> now listen, Travis, you also have an amazing voice. Obviously, we got a little sneak peek of that at the beginning of the interview, and I want to play something else here as well. Um, you singing Barrett's song uh, from Titanic, I believe, right? It is, yes. You know, you have such an amazing, and I'm sure you've been told this, you have such an amazingly mature voice for someone still so young. And, you know, not only the roles that you've been able to already play, which include Disaster on Broadway. I also, you know, with my director hat literally on, I also can imagine some of the dream roles that you know you're going to be, you know, growing into with a booming oh. voice like that. 
Put it into the universe, Will. Phantom of the Opera, here I come. I've been waiting, 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 and now I'm almost old enough to actually do it. I get uh, it, my friend. You're an old soul, and I love that. And But you also <laughs> were born with this gift that just so happens to, you know, be with a lot of roles that are maybe older than you. Yep, it, it's been like the, the debacle of my career thus far. Uh, people uh, just don't know where to place me because like you said, I am still relatively young, uh, but I do have a voice and an energy that uh, many say are beyond my years. So um, I just, you know, ride the wave. Well, stick with it, my friend. <laughs> Appreciate you, the gifts that have, I have. <laughs> you have a fan in me. You have a fan in me. Um, <laughs> Thanks. On top of that, you are an amazing painter. And by the way, on a personal note, I was also very close with both my grandparents. One of them, my mom's mom, was actually a painter. And so she painted a lot of flowers. A lot of uh, her paintings are in my husband in our, my house. And um, I want to know about your painting because... You have such a, and again, I want to say this right. You have an expressionistic yet surreal, but yet also realistic fusion going on. Can you explain to me how you would describe your art? Um, it, art to me is uh, a very therapeutic exercise. Mm. Um, I, I feel like a lot are that greater society kind of pigeonholes artists that like you have to have a signature um style you know you you're, all your paintings have to look the same way you have to be identifiable for uh, a specific trait to your work and i uh, while some artists they naturally do um gravitate towards that I feel that my art is uh, a channel for liberation for me. So um, sometimes that takes on the form of pseudo realistic interpretations of landscape uh, situations. Most of the time I take inspiration from form and shape mm. and then kind of go off the deep end with uh, color interpretation and textural interpretation as well. Uh, my favorite style of mine, I guess, that I paint in is uh, such that I paint in a way that to me, there's a very clear intention and inspiration, mm. but for the viewer, for the audience, it's completely open. Um, I love that. One of my favorite paintings is uh, The Kiss, which I, I believe you do have. Uh, it, um, it is, it is two people kissing. Um, I can draw the lines on it. When I point it out to people, they go, oh, ah, but every time I ask someone what they see in the painting, it's always something different. People see flowers or fish or mountains or, um, an old lady selling bread <laughs> was, uh, one interpretation once upon a time. Thing with art and obviously you are really like, you really truly are an artist with a capital A that you use all of your gifts that you've been given, obviously supported from a very young age, whether it was in Irish dance, through singing, through acting, through your writing, through your painting, but that you still allow the audience and not telling them, but just showing them an idea and allowing them to maybe, as it was therapeutic for you, Travis, I can only imagine your artwork, your paintings, for example, what a beautiful opportunity for people to possibly feel and to maybe see something, you know, whether it is a kiss of two people, whether it is their grandmother, whether it is whatever. But I think that's a beautiful mindset that you have, that it seems that you imbue in all of your art, that you put it out there and you allow others to see it, see it as they would like. I'm looking for an agent, Will. Are you available? Damn. You know, it's so interesting. Everyone always, my, some of my friends think I should be named that. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm a director, uh, but I am an ambassador for artists. I always knew that, you know, I love my performing career, Travis. Um, my brother and I got to travel the country, the world, Carnegie Hall. But I always knew that beyond my singing, I knew that there was so much talent out there that wasn't going to be even remotely supported, I had to do my small little part. And I feel like with you, 
you have the, kind of like that vessel vibe as well. Yeah, I mean, it's tricky too, because um, the greater society also pigeonholes artists into you are either a painter or an actor or a director, but you can do you can do multiple things. You can uh, oh, speak it. multiple you. artistic languages. My really good friend, um, Michael Kushner is a, a big- The multi-hyphenate. The multi-hyphenate, yes. Um, I'm interviewing him very soon as well. Uh, well, of course, <laughs> no surprise there. Uh, he's very much an inspiration for me in continuing to pursue all avenues of art that I don't have to, I don't consider myself just one thing or the other. And I don't think um, any particular industry or market has to either. So um, oh. it's fun to continue to explore in all directions. This is why I'm involved with Phoenix because they don't pigeonhole an artist. That's why it's called Phoenix 360. It's the well-roundedness of the artist that is celebrated. And I'm just so excited for you to not only connect with new fans in the country and around the world, but connecting with artists around the globe that whether it's as a singer, an actor, a writer, a painter, the future person that's gonna cast you in Phantom, you know? I think that it's, an, I'm, I'm really excited for you, Travis, but um, I'm really also grateful for you speaking with me today. I'm grateful for it as well. Thank you, Will. Thanks, Travis. Take care. Likewise. Bye. In the digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.